for joining us. Uh, today we'll continue our Zoom conferences with WVU's head coaches. Uh, today we have Mountaineer cross country and track coach Sean Clary. Sean, thanks for joining us. Uh, after the opening statement, we'll take questions from the media. Uh, Sean, let's start the conference by giving a, everyone a recap of your cross country and indoor track seasons. And then uh, also your competition for your outdoor track season was scheduled to begin on March 21st at Milan Park and update the group on where you were in your outdoor season when the news broke on March 13th about the season being canceled. Yeah, okay, thanks, thanks, Brian, I appreciate it. Um, and everybody for being uh, on this call, uh, we appreciate uh, your time. So I guess in reflection on the year, if we were to go back to the beginning of, beginning of cross country season back in August, we, you know, we sat at Canaan Valley where we, we go to a, a preseason cross country camp and, um, you know, for the first time in, in a long time in this program, in a number of years anyways, I, I truly believed we had a shot at uh, winning, winning the Big 12 cross-country meet. And, uh, you know, in terms of the girls in the program at this point, and they've been with us three and four years at this point, realistically, while I think all sports hope to win and, and, and plan to win, um, you know, I think our sports are touch different. There's, there's not a lot of miracles that happen on race day. It, it's basically a pattern of what's been happening over a few years and, and certainly a, a few months prior to it. So we sat there and discussed it and, and uh, you know, I had, I had a, 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 a relatively young team, a lot of walk-on kids that were contributing to the program. And, you know, they, it immediately set the tone for the season. And um, I guess if you were to flash forward, you know, the next 10 or 12 weeks uh, into October, November, you know, we, we, um, we came within probably five seconds of winning of winning the Big 12 cross country meet. If they, you know, we don't we took a score five seconds from the finish line. Our girls, we would have we would have won it. They announced that we won it on on, on the live results and you know, or speculated that we did. Uh, so, you know, all in all, I think you know we we lost it in the last second, but I think it was you know a tremendous step forward back again for our program. Um, these kids were brought in four and five years ago, three and four years ago you know, into a tradition in the four or five years prior to where they expect to be at nationals. They, they, they believe this is a program that should be at nationals and, and uh, my God, they got close. So uh, I, you know, I walked away from that meet and I, I actually felt like it was, it was probably one of the very, very best uh, seasons that uh, the program has ever had um, regardless of, of, of winning or not winning. So I was, I was very, very pleased with, with what the young, the young ladies did, you know, it's, it's interesting. We have a, a fairly high percentage of kids locally in this program, um, certainly from across the state and locally. We've always tried to do that and, and always will. So to do it with kids out of West Virginia um, is, is, you know, to me, outstanding. They, they carry a 3.6 GPA. They, they, you know, are just tremendous kids. Um, moving into the winter months, I, I, think, I think basically if I were to touch on some of the highlights with the winter, um, we had numerous kids, uh, numerous young ladies in the program, student athletes that 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 moved into the all-time top five in our in our in our in our program um, all-time lists. And and some of those names: Seda Seda Wright, Gilmer County, um, Peter Gay, also moved in in the in the long jump. Maisha then moved uh, moved into the top five in the triple jump and. You know, probably the the most outstanding athlete for us this winter, Haley Jackson, moved in into the mile at all time top five. Which, you know, the events that I just told you about, um, we've had numerous All Americans in those events, and you know, as we as we looked ahead to the outdoor track season, that's probably what's most most disappointing for that that group of young ladies is that many kids within the program um, were finally going to get into their specialties. Theta is a you know, her, her primary event is the discus. It's only thrown outdoors. We have four extremely strong um, uh, steeple chasers. The steeple chase did not run indoors, so we were excited about that. You know, the 10K last year, we had girls to, to garner all Big 12 um, awards that were back for the 10K uh, outdoors. So, so you know, you know, leading off of what Brian said there, you know, when we found this out, um, you know, I, I, I'll tell you, it was, it was something else. We, we, you know, we've been reading about it. We've probably spoken to a lot of coaches, you know, on all the sports across the spectrum. You know, once, once the NBA went down, it was, 
it was just a trickle effect. And um, I will say this though, the day after third, that Thursday, uh, we called a team meeting and um, I couldn't have been prouder. I, I think that the, the, the room was sad. The room was, was frustrated. It was angry. It was sad. Ultimately, those student athletes that, that I'm fortunate enough to be a head coach for um, understood the, the magnitude of what we're experiencing. And, and quite honestly, I haven't heard um, I haven't heard any real whining out of them. They're 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 a pretty special group. They understand that that the, the world and the world's health is at stake here, and and um, I'm 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 actually I'm extremely proud. All right, Coach, we're all going to take some questions here. Um, first one comes from uh, Greg Hunter. Go ahead, Greg. So, Coach, uh, obviously seniors are going to be allowed to return next season. I'm not certainly how many you had on your roster, but have you talked to them about that? That's sort of the general question. How many play? How many of your seniors will come back? Hi, Greg. Yeah, I've got. I've got. Actually, you know, which was exciting for our future was we don't have many many seniors. Not certainly not in a situation to come back. We do have two. Candace Jones. Uh, actually, Candace Jones was married last summer. She's Candace Archer now. Um, Candace is one of our very best milers. She was an incredible breakthrough for us last cross country season. And, and, uh, she had already made plans and was, was, was leaving town to, to go, uh, run in a professional running group, um, somewhere in the country. Uh, she, she wasn't sure where, so her plans were that she wanted to do it, but uh, long story short, she's, she's decided to stay and, um, we'll use her, we'll use her last year of eligibility and, um, another young lady we have out of uh, Kays Valley, West Virginia, Olivia Hill, um, is undecided. Olivia is um, is pre-med, and she has numerous options in front of her, one of which that she's strongly considering is coming back to utilize that uh, that last year of eligibility. I mean, Olivia's qualified for a couple of NCAA championships in the 10K, uh, was one of my leaders, one of my captains this past year. and uh, she's got some thinking to do, um, whether she can defer med school, whether she, she'll she reapply to med schools and try to get into maybe what would have been her first choice. Um, I, I would say the odds of Olivia coming back are probably 50-50. Uh, but, you know, Candace jumped at it, and, uh, you know, if, we, if, if she feels that's the best for her future, then that's, uh, that's exciting to us. All right. Go ahead, John Antonick. <clears throat> Hey, Sean, um, I know you don't have a roster size as big as football, but you've got a pretty big roster for track, and you've got a lot of girls spread around the world, Kenya, Australia, Canada, so forth. How have you been able to keep, keep up with them, and have you been able to keep up with them? Yeah, John, good question. Um, you know, within, within our sport, within track, like, like many sports, We've got event groups, so I've got uh, some assistant coaches that directly daily coach um, what we would call their group within our group, and uh, I, I would I would say that the communication between our coaching staff and the student athletes in the program, um, I know for me personally is is daily. Uh, at, at the very most, it doesn't go more than two days without chatting, just a few words. Um, and, and for my coaches, I, I am assuming it's similar. I, I know personally, I've reached out to, to each and every one of them. Um, they're doing well. You know, I think everybody's concern is how are they going to adjust to online classes? I think some are made for it and others, it's, 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 it's terrible. <laughs> so, so I think the fact that the whole world is doing it makes it a little bit easier. But um, yeah, we communicate WhatsApp, uh, the instant messenger, things like that. We've got group me. Uh, they've got subgroups going on trying to keep themselves motivated and, and, and I mean more so motivated in school uh, and, and just to make sure that, that, you know, in another month they can reset the, reset the button and, and basically say, okay, well, this was to be our summer and, and now we can kind of think about life a little differently. All right, go ahead, Kevin Kinder. Coach, other than like your relays, you know, a lot of track is individual you know, sport, a lot of individual practice, a lot of alone time work. Does that help them, do you think, maybe cope with this a little bit better, you know, that they're self-motivated, self-directed in that way? You know, I think that's a great question. Uh, one of the reminders that our staff um, constantly, constantly gives, 
you know, gives our kids is it, our off seasons are very different than, than most. Um, our, our conditioning phase is actually specific conditioning to our sport. If you're talking about being a runner, um, you know, when you take a look at a thrower, a, a stereotype of a thrower is that, that, that they're usually alone. They're out in a field somewhere throwing implements and they, they many times throw at track meets outside the stadium. They're, they're used to the, the seclusion and the isolation and, and quite honestly being alone. And, um, you know, I think that the toughest, the toughest event areas for us might be this very specific and technical uh, track events, the jumps and the, um, and the pole vault. Uh, so we have some very, very good jumpers and some very strong pole vaulters for them. You know, they found running and they're, they're, they're out running and, you know, I live over by the rail trail. That thing has exploded in the last few weeks. Um, obviously, we're we're preaching, you know, tiny, tiny little groups. Go solo. Go with go with your one friend. Run single file. Do the things that we're supposed to be doing, you know, in accordance to to uh, to this distancing. But I I I think it does make it a little bit easier. So the flip side is when you when you're not able to perform, you're kind of thinking like an individual when when so so it's hurtful so you you don't have 10 or 12 in, in a room and and all trying to motivate each, each other to try to get things going again but you know they've woken up probably the next day a few days later and then they've they've kind of gotten back to work within the parameters that we're allowed to to have them working so um yeah they've kind of trained their whole lives to be <laughs> to be to be individuals and and i think at this point it's up to them to to continue forward and make sure that when when everybody gets the green light that they're at least in in respectable shape to get back to work go ahead and take another question from john yeah a follow up to what i asked before um how many of your girls are on campus right now and how many are there are there any concerns with some of your athletes that are out of the country um getting back in if they're not here? well i'll tell you i've had the, i had a text this morning you know, it's hard to communicate with the girls over in Australia just because of the time change. So we're, we're figuring that out. But um, one, one of my young ladies there, she, she, she was staying in town. She was trying to stay in her routine, go to school. Um, just basically hope that, hope that the travel bans and things like that were lifted at some point in the summer. She could go home and visit her family for a month. But, you know, she, she, she and I chatted about it and, and felt it might be best for her to go be with, be with her family. And as soon as she got off the plane, she uh, was, you know, under the quarantine for, for two weeks, which ends, as a matter of fact, ends today. And so yesterday, yesterday afternoon, the police came by her home to ask her a series of questions uh, to ensure that she was ready to get back into the real world over there in Australia, which I, I thought was quite interesting. Um, but I, I think I think our kids got out soon enough where where they're back with their loved ones. And to be honest, of of the countries that we currently have on our roster, um, you know, America right now is the one that's that's supposed to be going through the next you know with the next few weeks being it's it's a high, it's high peak. So to be honest, I think the Australians are on the back end of that, and and the Canadians are with their families, and they're they're very similar to the American pattern. We have we have one young lady from British Columbia, Canada that you know, like California and Washington and British Columbia right above it, they've just been decimated. And, and uh, that was the only young, the only young lady on, in our program that I actually felt should stay in Morgantown. And then she did so. So she's here uh, just trying to take care of business. I think we lost you on video, but we'll go ahead and uh, take another question from Sean Manning. Okay. Yeah, someone's beeped beeping in on me here it'll come back okay. okay john hey coach i was just you had mentioned some of the the local distance runners you have i was kind of wondering just how they had developed uh, sarah wills amber dombrowski uh sam hatcher and peyton kakura how they've developed uh, well i'd say i'd say starting with the first one you said there sarah wills has actually actually um become one of my captains here in the program um She's a big, big cheerleader for the program and, and certainly as, a, as an athlete has, has run inside our top five in, in big cross country meets and, and been a very strong contributor. I, I would say of the local girl, she's probably, you know, from the, from the moment that she walked in until today has probably improved, I would say the most. Of course, the other ones are a lot younger. Um, 
Samantha Hatcher, you know, was it was a she's now she now she qualified for the Big Twelve Championships indoors and set a lifetime best in in the indoor three K, which three K two mile. Um, what a joy to coach. Just, these kids from Morgantown, they already know how to work hard. Um, they, they're they very, very well coached in high school, and uh, they understand and love running. And, and, and by the time we get them, it's basically just kind of a continuation of what they've already been doing for three or four years. So we will continue to do it. Um, I, I could see somebody like Peyton turning into a captain over the next couple of years also. Um, she may not be my best runner, but she certainly has qualities that that, that, uh, that any coach would want in, in leadership positions within the program. So we'll keep doing it. Reminder, if you have any questions, please use the uh, raise hand feature. The next question is from Greg Hunter. So co <clears throat> coach, unfortunately you didn't get to use your, your new track uh, complex much this spring, but just overall, what, what has that meant in, I guess, what, year and a half since that opened? Yeah, it's um, so our first meet was a year ago, March, late March. Um, we we had a rough winter a year ago in terms of being able to be outside and train. Our, our first real workouts last March, last April, really last April. Um, I'll tell you the biggest thing it was. It was a, it was a major boost of morale for the group to be able to to be able to get out there and and, and have a track and have various event areas training at the exact same time is the first time we've had in in years. You know, unfortunately, that outdoor track really wasn't safe anymore for the pole vault and a few other events. So you had a couple girls training indoors and you had others training on the rail trail. And, and, and just to have a group around each other um, was just a, just a big pump, pump up for the group. We, we go out there and we turn some music on and, and they work really, really hard on what I would consider to be an incredible facility. Um, it's helped recruiting. It's certainly helped recruiting a little bit this year. And again, unfortunately, the, the vast majority of our recruiting is done from March on um, in outdoor track season. These seniors are, are still, well, they hope to have had a high school senior, you know, track season. So you never know, they might still, but um, so, so we were, we were kind of cut off at the knees in terms of, of when the majority of our recruiting is done. We go sit and watch high school meets and, and are able to sit with coaches and, and meet families and things like that. So we didn't really get that benefit this year with the track, but, we have great social media here at the university and, 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 and our sports information has, has created a portfolio of pictures and, and ourselves also that, that we can send out and kids can get a good impression. Um, yeah, it's going to, it'll change the community. It'll, it'll help, it'll help everybody. And, and, and uh, certainly will help West Virginia. All right, John, go ahead. I'm on a hot streak here, Sean. I got all kinds of questions <laughs> for you. Um, Keep going. Yeah, well, um, just curious. I know the conference has instituted specific rules for training right now for for some sports. What can you do right now in in track and cross country? And I would assume in your sport, because there's 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 distancing, I guess, involved specifically in the, in running, that you can do a lot of the things that you would normally do just because that's the way the sports landed. Go through that with me a little bit, if you would. Yeah, we, we can. So, so what is not allowed is for, for us to take a local pole vaulter and go to the track and practice the ball with them. Okay, we cannot do that. But what we can do is send out um, conditioning programs, um, running programs, strength and conditioning. You know, the, the, the department's done a wonderful job over the last week or two putting together care packages for these kids. With, with specifics like, like for us as distance runners, uh, iron supplements and, and stretching bands and, and things like that. And, and so they're able to do things at home. They're able to, you know, we've got, so for strength and conditioning, we, we have, you know, my, my strength coach, Jared, has created three, a three-tier system of what you have available. For some that might have a home gym, this is what you'll do. For others that, that have access to little dumbbells and, and, and little, you know, some weights. Um, this is what we want you to do. And we're going to send them bands. And, and the third would just be body, body weight type exercises, strength and conditioning wise. So they're in pretty good, pretty good spot that way. Um, with regards to just being able to get out and run, you know, it, it, it's tricky because you don't want to tell them we've got, someone asked me earlier, we probably have 10 girls that are still in, in Morgantown and 10 runners that are still in, in Morgantown. And 
you don't want to tell them, okay, I, I think you should all get together and go for a run. I mean, that's, to me, it's irresponsible to do that. So what they've done is they've paired off and they've either gone single or they've gone in pairs. And quite honestly, the 10 girls in town, probably little subgroups of one or two or three have seen each other, but it's not gone into the whole group. They, they've been pretty responsible with that and quite responsible, actually. So um, you know, life as a distance runner hasn't changed a lot. I, I'm permitted to, to facilitate training for five days a week. Um, so I've chosen the five days that I'm going to say, this is what I believe you should be doing. And, you know, I, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that the kids are, are falling into line with what their basic patterns are. Those, those girls want to run, you know, my, my job for 90% of the team is, is, is not to, to, to push them it's actually to hold them back when, when maybe they're doing a little bit too much so um, I think they're they're in a good spot um, over the last week six or seven days I've spoken to all the vaulters and and they <laughs> they become runners <laughs> they're out running and and trying to stay in shape that way they can do slight exercises on their own to, to stay sharp and have a little bit of speed but you know tracks around the country for the most part have been shut down so really they're just out on the roads and down on the trails and here in West Virginia feel very much permitted and, and at this point I would say encouraged to be out exercising responsibly so as long as that mandate is still in place we'll continue to do it. Go ahead and get a follow-up from John. Last one for me uh, Sean on this how long do you think it would take let, let's say this I guess this is speculative a little bit but how long how much training do you need to, to, to get a season started? But, you know to be honest so season number one coming up would be cross country. And I think uh, at a fictitious date, I, I think to be honest with you, if, if the date was lifted in August, I think we could be ready by September. And I would say the reason we would be is because on their own, they're going to make sure they'd be ready. And I, and I have that much faith in the group that I have. Um, again, the primary you know component to distance running is aerobic conditioning. And, and at this point, they're still permitted to be outside. So I don't really think it affects us that much, John. I, and I think with regards to, to the track team, um, they're also in a pretty good spot because, because it's the worst thing that they can do all summer, all spring and summer is run and, and lift whatever they have available to them. You know, they have all fall to get ready for track season. So, you know, more along the lines of a, of a winter sport. So while we utilize that time late summer and, and fall, I, I really don't see a scenario unless on this, unless this were to be pushed into the new year where, where we wouldn't and couldn't be ready for first season. Go ahead and take a question from Greg Hunter. If this is the last question, then we'll finish up with uh, Brian Messerly. So if you have any more, send them in. But go ahead, Greg. So, Sean, not to say you're old, but you've been around long enough to have seen West Virginia <laughs> in a couple of conferences. So, I have. yeah, just compare what the, the Big 12. I mean, Texas, Texas Tech, you know, obviously are very good with – What's life in this league been like compared to past ones? You know, I, I think the Big 12, um, I, think, I, think, I think in the Big East, you know, West, West Virginia being a women's only team, um, we fit into the Big East at that point very well because I think everybody had, had little scars against them. You know, this guy had a track, this one didn't this one was fully funded, this wasn't fully scholarship. Not There, there was a lot more parity in terms of, of what was accessible to them. I, I think our administration currently have, have, have un, under the parameters of the NCAA, have given us every opportunity financially um, to, to succeed. And, and I think just the fundamental difference is that, that track within the athletic departments in the Big 12 is a much higher priority than it was in the Big East, if that makes sense. Cross country in the Big East within, within the various universities was a, was a premier, premier sport. Um, I would say track, I would say track was a little lower on the totem pole. I, I would say in, in the Big 12, it's, it's, um, it's one of the higher priority sports. And, and, and I think with that means You've got you've you've just got you've just got a few more resources. And um, this track that we we built a year ago or helped to build a year ago will go a long, long way to helping bring that parity up. Um, and we know this. I I I work for I work for a senior staff that understands and and is doing their very best to try to help us 
with with this situation and with these situations. Um, you know, anybody that walks into that shell building understands what it is. And and um, that said, for 20 years we were <laughs> we were you know we were the envy of most of the Big East teams. We had an indoor track. We had something most of them didn't have. So it's just getting older and. And you know that the plans that Shane's put into place um, will fix that in time. I mean, I'm probably expecting a little bit of a, a setback in terms of time now with regards to some of the things that we might require. But overall, I, I absolutely have full faith in the people I work for that that uh, that we're going to address them. Um, I think one of the big pluses that the Big 12 has that the Big East didn't you know. So I just mentioned we had a track is it, just weather. A lot of the schools. Um, a lot of the states that they belong to are sprint powerhouse states. They're throwing powerhouse states and, and they have warm weather. They're training outdoors 12 months of the year. Um, you know, we walk into the big 12 indoor meet and we are pasty white and my peers for the most part are, are suntan. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's just a different world. And I, and I think, you know, at this point with these parameters, it's, it's, it's why I love track. I love all the events in track and field, but it makes a little more sense to have, have a little more emphasis in, in distance running because I think that that's our climate and that's our geographical region and I think that's where our resources are, are probably best spent.